After a massive public uprising, Guatemalan President Otto Perez Molina has resigned. His resignation came just hours after a judge approved the attorney general's arrest warrant for him. This follows Congress's surprising, unanimous decision to strip him of immunity from prosecution, bowing to public pressure. Prosecutors said Perez Molina will be charged with illicit association, taking bribes and customs fraud. Attorney General Thelma Aldana said Perez Molina was also being investigated for money laundering, which could lead to the freezing of his assets. Otto Perez Molina's former vice president and other government officials are also facing similar charges. Just before the broadcast, Democracy Now! reached journalist Alan Nairn in Guatemala City. Last night, the attorney general issued an order of arrest for General Perez Molina, the president. And a few hours later, uh, Pettis Molina resigned, just before midnight. Uh, it's quite possible now that, as a private citizen, Pettis Molina will be uh, arrested sometime after dawn. This is a another huge victory for the the popular uprising in in Guatemala. Uh, Pettis Molina, just a few weeks ago, seemed completely invulnerable, but. Uh, now he may be going to prison, and he will be facing trial uh, on corruption charges. But this is just the beginning of the challenges for the popular movement, because stepping in to replace Pérez Molina will be Vice President Maldonado Aguirre. Maldonado Aguirre is the key figure who, as a member of the High Court of Guatemala, annulled the genocide verdict against General Rios Montt. He did that at the demand of Kasif, the oligarchs of Guatemala, after the criminal court uh, issued a guilty genocide verdict against Rios Montt and sen sentenced him to 80 years. Uh, the oligarchs went on TV, had a press conference, and they demanded, they demanded in the name of their money that uh, the court annul this verdict. And Maldonado Aguirre, who at that time was a leader of the High Constitutional Court of Guatemala, complied. Uh, and he is now the vice president. He is now the man who will be stepping in to replace Pérez Molina. And in fact, Maldonado Aguirre began his political career with the MLN, a political party. The MLN was a partner of the CIA in the 1954 invasion of Guatemala, which overthrew the democratically elected government put the army in power and began the uh, reign of terror that is still reverberating today. The MLN uh, described itself as the party of organized violence, and they ran their own semi-public uh, death squad. Uh, so now this man, Maldonado Aguirre, is the acting president. He will have that position until January. This Sunday, uh, there is a presidential election in Guatemala. And uh, the slate of candidates is dominated by people who were backed uh, by the old army generals who ran the massacres, um, drug running syndicates, other organized crime, and the Kasif oligarchs. Uh, those being backed by those forces are the the ones who are considered to have a chance to win, because they're the ones with the money. They're the ones who've been uh, dominating the media coverage and the advertising. Uh, and unless the election is postponed, and many, many people, including leading uh, academics, uh, leading lawyers, and uh, popular groups have been calling for a post postponement so the electoral law can be rewritten uh, to, to give a fair chance to uh, actual uh, real citizens who are, who are not backed by drug dealers or by uh, killer generals to, to, get, to get a chance to contest for office. But unless that election is postponed, uh, one of those, one of the front people for those groups will be the newly elected president of Guatemala. So if this movement is going to turn into one that wins real structural change, uh, it's only just beginning. And even with Pérez Molina himself, there is a big issue. He's now going to go to trial for corruption. But 
that's really his minor crime. His main crime is mass murder. He was one of the implementers of the policy of slaughter in the Ischiel Highlands, for which Rios Montt was convicted of genocide. I, I met him at the time that he was doing this, and his soldiers described how they um, would go into villages and wipe out the civilians. Uh, but no charges have yet been brought against Pérez Molina for those crimes. However, they could be, because under Guatemalan law, ordinary citizens can come forward and file criminal charges as long as those charges are accepted by the attorney general's uh, office. If there is going to be a serious legal process against Pérez Molina for the mass killings, it should include um, the what in Guatemalan law is called the intellectual authors uh, and the collaborators. And those would include uh, the U.S. sponsors. <clears throat> Pérez Molina received backing uh, from the U.S. military and from U.S. intelligence when he later became head of Hedos, Guatemalan intelligence. Um, so if there's a serious prosecution, uh, it would have the option of calling um, U.S. officials, subpoenaing U.S. records, and indicting uh, U.S. officials for their role uh, in the murders. And uh, I would urge them to do that because uh, the law should be enforced uh, impartially. And even though Pettis Molina was the man on the ground uh, directing the killers, he had bosses and sponsors, and the Americans out of Washington uh, were perhaps the most important. George Polk Award-winning journalist Alan Nairn reporting from Guatemala City. He's covered Guatemala since the 1980s. You can follow him on Twitter, at Alan Nairn 14, for the latest news on the resignation of the president of Guatemala, Otto Pérez Molina.